Hi there. Okay, my name is Ashley Smith and I am a Star Diamond coach with Beachbody. And today I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about time management. That is something that is so huge in this business to being successful and something that's also so hard to do because sometimes it's so hard to manage our time wisely and make sure that we're really using it in the best way possible to further our business and not just spend time surfing all over Facebook or um, you know, commenting on people's pictures and not really getting anything done behind the scenes of what we need to do as coaches. So I want to share with you a little bit about my story and then kind of how I have managed my time um, while I was full-time teaching and how my plan is to manage my time um, in these next coming weeks as I'm transitioning into being a full-time coach and a full-time mom. So um, I started coaching about seven months ago. I guess I'm coming up on seven months. And I started coaching when I was a full-time teacher. Um, I would commute about three hours a day in the car, um, you know, about an hour and a half there and back, depending upon the days and the traffic. Um, and then I would spend a lot of time at school in my classroom. I would get there at 7.30 or so, and then I wouldn't leave until about 4.30 or 5. Long days, not a lot of time to sit and do all of my coaching things. So how did I get it done and how am I here today and, and being successful as a coach and now able to um, be able to work from home in just um, tomorrow actually in just a day. So I what I kind of did as far as my time management is anytime I was in the car, you know, give or take a few days, I just, sometimes I just want to listen to music in the car and that's fine. Um, but most of the time I would put on a personal development book on tape. Um, you know, you can go to iTunes and download so many of them. Or um, you can also buy them off of Amazon and just put the CD in your car and it's super easy to listen to so that while you're driving you're consistently getting good energy and good um, vibes while you are um, on your commute and while you're spending your time wisely you're learning new things you know as a coach it's so hard to deal with hearing no and sometimes there's just things that we really need help on to better ourselves to make us better coaches to be able to better support other people and um, and that's a one way that you can get really great tips is through personal development so I highly encourage you doing that but so on my way to work and on my way home I would either listen to a personal development book or I would watch training videos now kind of dangerous but I would go onto Facebook and I'd go into my training group that I was in and I would catch up on any of the videos that I hadn't watched so far so you know, whether it was a push to whatever group, you know, to get to the next rank level or it was just a training group with my upline, whatever it was, I was constantly watching videos and listening to them, not watching, but listening to them and getting good tips. You know, I could stop it and quickly make myself a voice um, reminder in my phone or um, I was able to at least have them watched and then when I got home I was able to kind of comment underneath them or send questions to people or you know whatever it may be. So that was one way that I used my time wisely while on my commute since I spent such a significant time in the car. Um, then fast forward to when I got to work. I was blessed enough to have planning time. You know, as a teacher, you usually get one to two periods of planning. And I was blessed to have planning time in the morning. So I would go ahead and I would start my day with personal development or with whatever training video I was watching or catching up on or listening to the wake up call, whatever it was. Then I would get into my classroom and I would immediately pull open my, um, my computer. And I would hop on Facebook and I'd spend about an hour or so because I would get to work early too purposefully to, to skip the traffic and to be able to go ahead and get set up at work. So um, what I did is I would hop on and I would check in with my challengers. So whatever group I had going on then, I would check in and I'd go through the page, make sure that I had commented on um, some of the posts maybe of a meal or a workout. And then I would also you know, just encourage them and, and answer any questions. Then I would hop into my back office really quickly. If there was a rank advancement, I would make a graphic for it and I would I would, you know, share with my team that this so and so made it to emerald or made it to diamond or whatever the certain rank advancement was. I have a prefab email that I send my new leads from um from just from Beachbody. So if it was a, you know, just someone who got me as a free coach or if it was somebody who um, is a Shakeology lead, I had a prefab email that I would quickly go to my sent items, I would copy and paste it, make something a little bit personal in there, and I would send them my new leads an email, make sure that I didn't forget to follow up with my new leads because you don't wanna leave them hanging either. You know, they're your customers, even though 
you didn't necessarily sign them up personally, they're still your customers. Sorry, there's a mosquito in my eye. Um, so after I would do my back office, then I would quickly check in with my coaches. Personally, I have a message thread that goes with my coaches, and so um, I would consistently check in with them, make sure I had, you know, we're all in kind of different time zones. So I would quickly check in with them and see, you know, what's going on, if I missed any questions before I went to bed, um, if there was anything that they were talking about already after I woke up, and I would kind of give my two cents, tell them to have a great day, and make sure that I had answered everything that they had. You know, I'd go through all my team pages, my group page, my inspiration crew page. Um, I'd make sure I'd answer any questions there. If there was a really awesome video that I listened to while I was on my way to work, I saved it and I had posted it into the group so that I could share that knowledge and that awesome those awesome tips with my coaches and I would quickly put it in there and then I would move on. So you know, as a teacher, you don't have a lot of time and there's a million other things that you have to do while you're teaching as well. But my business was a priority and I wanted to make sure that I was getting in the time that I needed with my coaches as well and with my customers. So biggest things I got there, sent my leads, my new leads emails. I checked in with my coaches and on all of my challenges, all my team pages that I had and made sure that everything was caught up, that I had answered questions and everything. I would go into my email if I ever had anybody from maybe Instagram that had emailed me or someone that I had emailed about um, about a product or about coaching. I made sure to check in with them as well. I've kind of made it my rule to my personal rule to not go more than 24 hours without messaging someone back with at least letting them know, hey, I am super busy today. I promise I got your message. I just wanted to let you know and I'll be touching base with you, you know, by Friday or whatever that may be. So if it was a busy week, you know, I would go ahead and just let them know that so that they don't think that their message is being ignored. You don't want to lose that window of opportunity to be able to have them become, you know, a person of your team or, or a person in your challenge group that you could join on their journey with. So you want to make sure that you're being consistent with that as well. Um, as far as everything else, I made a plan. Um, making a plan is huge as far as being um, successful and just being consistent overall and not getting burnt out and overwhelmed. So at the beginning of um, the month, I would make a calendar for myself and I would plan out from day to day exactly what I was going to do. You know, I would plan when my free group was going to be and from what days and which days I was going to post about it and which day I was going to fill it on and which day I was going to open it on and when it would end. And then I would post, you know, that I would write down the date that I wanted to have Success Club 5 and then the date that I wanted to have Success Club 10. And then fast forward into my paid challenge group. I would have that theme picked out and I would choose each of the different days. And that's something that I still do. A calendar is just huge as far as making sure that you're um, that you're on pace for that month and it just really helps you to kind of set yourself up and have have good goals for yourself as well not get lost in the mix of of being a busy you know working five nine to five job or being a teacher or being a nurse or whatever it is that you do um, it really helps for you to have a good schedule set for yourself um, so as far as going back to my days as teaching, as a teacher, um, I would use my planning time to get stuff done. You know, yes, I would do the things that I needed to do um, for school and make sure that I was planned and prepped for that for my school kids and for what I was teaching that week. But just as I planned ahead as a teacher, I also planned ahead as a coach. So I would get in and I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to spend that first hour of my planning doing my power of threes. So I went in and I followed up and I posted a message. If I hadn't made a, hadn't made a post by the time I got to work, I made a post. Whether it was about my breakfast or my Shakeology or you know a motivational quote for the day or I took a picture of something and made it my own something that would be inspirational to other people to kind of be able to share something with them so that they see you in the morning and then they're also not you know you're not just disappearing for the whole day one of the biggest parts of being a successful coach is being consistent so um, one of the things I also like to do is schedule my post there's an app called buffer if you have an iPhone and it is a lifesaver um, as a teacher I you know, when you're during the school day, I like to try to not have my phone out on me all the time. You know, I don't want my students to see me on my phone. I want them to feel like I'm engaged with them. And so, um, 
it's probably a rule too, I don't know. <laughs> but um, So I would make my posts in the morning and then, you know, a lot of times I would have something from my personal development or from my video that I listened to on my way to work that would really speak to me. And so I would find a cute graphic or I would make one myself and kind of put my words and my thoughts into, um, into a picture. And then I would go ahead and write up my post. And then I can say, I want this to post on Facebook at 11.45 a.m. or at 2.31 p.m. or you know whatever it may be. So that you don't even have to think about it, but you're not just, you're not scrambling to make just kind of like a crappy post, you know, that's just something lame that's not really giving any value to anybody, but it's actually meaningful and you've thought about it and it's all this fresh thoughts in your mind from when you did your personal development that morning and it's something awesome that you can share with your followers and, and inspire the people who are, you know, who are following your journey, following your life. So scheduling your posts is a really, really great thing to do, even if it's just one a day that you're scheduling because you can do the morning and the evening, you know, when you get home. That's a great, a great, great tool. So um, in addition to using my planning time in the morning to really try to knock out my power of threes, I left my screen up all day long on my computer. You know, I'd be doing teaching and a lot of times, you know, your kids are doing stuff at their desk. They're doing other things. So I would hop on and if I had five minutes where my kids were doing something silently, I would send another message and I would jot it down in my power of threes or I would follow up with this one girl who sent me, maybe I have 10 messages that I'm looking at in Facebook and I'm like, oh my gosh, how, when am I going to get through those? and I didn't get through all of them in the morning during my planning time, then I would take one and I would go ahead and answer that one back and I would jot it down in my power of threes that today I followed up with Betty Jo about a Shigology challenge pack or whatever it may be. So that's one way also that I kind of multitasked a lot. This entire year has been, I'm the queen of multitasking <laughs> for teaching and having everything up in front of me so that I could still be successful because this is this was something that I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to stay home with my son who's on the way. I wanted to be able to quit my job teaching at the end of this year. And now it's coming true because of all the hard work that I've done for just six months. Am I making the big bucks? No, but I'm I'm making more than I ever thought I would already with Beachbody. And it's been um, something that I'm able to do now. My husband is you know, on board with me quitting my job and being able to stay at home with our son. Um, when he gets here and so it's just amazing what can happen if you really really stick to it set a plan and really um, make it a no a no no non-negotiable um, if you make a schedule that can really really help you so um, I'm kind of all over the place but so other than my morning routine and also checking in just here and there you know during lunch I'd bring my phone down with me while I'm eating lunch with my colleagues I'd snap a picture of my lunch and I'd maybe share if it was a really good lunch you know maybe a cool salad or a new recipe or whatever and I'd have it already ready to go you know if, when I meal plan throughout the week I kind of make the same thing so maybe I chose Wednesday to post my salad and I would already have the recipe written down because I did that on Sunday and I could easily post that today and I already have it saved in my notes that this was the recipe but here's the picture for the week and there's a valuable post for someone somebody can can try your recipe for your new salad or you know whatever it is so then you know I would head home on my commute and again there's always videos that I would miss in team trainings or in group um, or on my team page, you know, and so, or I'd just research them on YouTube. I'd find some different videos that were awesome. I'd watch them and then share them in my team page while I'm driving home. So, um, that was how I kind of used my traffic time wisely. And then, um, when I would get home, especially when I was a first time or a first, especially when I was an early coach right early on, um, you know, I was in my new coaches training and I was really so excited and I, worked all the time when I got home I would stay up late I would watch all my training videos I would do all the homework and um, you know and sometimes that's manageable sometimes you can't afford to stay up late and you can't afford you know maybe you don't have a husband or kids or you know it's just you and so you do have that extra time to be able to do stuff but it's also not realistic you know you are gonna have times where you're just you're tired and you're exhausted and there's just a lot of things that you could all you can always do more as a coach but you need to kind of get the schedule that works for you so for my husband and I what we kind of decided was you know we come home and we would do our workout together we really enjoy doing our workouts together and then we'd make our dinner and you know I'd usually snap a picture of my workout snap a picture of my my meal just to have either in my vault or to use that night 
and then um, and then when we sat down to kind of wind down to the end of the day, granted it wasn't very long because we get home so late that, you know, by the time we have just a couple hours to get dinner in and a workout in and sit down and relax for just a minute, you know, it wasn't long, but I would spend that good hour and a half, maybe two hours if we stayed up a little bit later and I would sit there and while, you know, he's watching TV or while we're watching a movie or whatever, I would go ahead and I would continue working. Oh, my dogs. I would continue working through um, my power of threes. And so I would make sure that I was, you know, continuing to check in with any new people that asked me questions or, um, sorry, any new people that asked me questions or um, with new challengers, you know, people who maybe posted other questions and things like that. So that's kind of how I did it, you know, as a first time coach and as a new coach. Um, it was hard to be consistent, but I made it work for myself. So, you know, I was a full-time teacher, and so I chose what was going to work for me. I was going to work in all my little minutes that I had in between. I was going to work during my planning time, and I was going to work here and there. You know, on the weekends, I would say, honey, I've... I've got to get some work done. He's like, great, I'll work with you. I'll get my computer out and I'll work with you. So, you know, I encourage you to, you know, whoever it is that's special in your life, you know, your husband or your your kids, <laughs> excuse me, your kids or um, your partner, you know, make a, make a plan with them. You know, if they're really on board with you, then they're going to understand that sometimes it's going to take a little bit more time for you to really get ahead because you're focusing on really pushing forward and, um, and making this goal happen for you and for your family. So um, get a plan, write it out, schedule things ahead of time, um, work in between different times. You know, don't kill yourself over it. It's okay to not spend endless hours of time on your coaching, but set a time and make sure that you have a goal for yourself. And then by the end of the day, you wanna be feeling good about yourself. You know, there'll be days where I didn't really do anything at night and I didn't really answer any messages back and I wasn't as good of a coach as I could have been and I didn't feel good about myself I felt like I was kind of letting people down and so to me that was not fulfilling my goal that I had kind of set out for myself and so you know on those days then I would open my computer up and I'd give do a couple more messages I'd send a couple more follow-ups or I'd check in with a couple people and then I would close my computer and I was like okay I feel like this was a good day. I feel like I did most of the things that I needed to do. I, I filled in almost every column on my power of threes. You know, maybe not all of them, but I at least sent one message. I followed up with one person. I posted this, I checked in here. Um, so that's what's important to build your business. Um, being consistent and setting a plan and using all these tools that we have to be successful and to make life easier for you. I promise, take pictures of everything and just keep them in your phone. When a cool thought comes your way, write it down write them down you know all of those things are stuff that can really really help you feel less stressed out and like you're scrambling to to get posts out or scrambling to do different things because you planned ahead so schedule out posts and just make a plan for yourself you know if you can only work an hour a day then you make that the best and most successful hour of your day turn off all of those notifications don't look at your Facebook feed only go to your messages, only go to your email, only go to your back office and really focus on, okay, is what I'm doing right now, is is that going to help me build my business? Is this helping me be successful? Because if it's not, then don't do it. Okay. So don't waste time looking at people's face with That's something that you can do later on after your hours. So focus on the things that are really going to make you successful and really ease all that stress that you might be feeling as a first time coach, because there is so much to do and there's endless amounts of um, of steps that you can take to be successful, but you want to enjoy. You're doing this because you want to enjoy it because you're passionate about helping people and about fitness. And so don't you don't want to be feeling frustrated and overwhelmed. This should not be something that adds stress to your life. It should be something that should be adding joy and absolute just excitement for life that you're helping all these people and that it's something so fun as getting to play around on social media. So um, I hope that these tips helped you. Um, if you have any questions for me or you would like to be supported in some other way or you want to know more about what my routine is, um, I would love to share more with you. It's a lot being a first-time coach and it's a lot doing it while you're working a full-time job, but it is absolutely doable and possible. And I have not once lost my 
excitement and zest for this business and now I'm getting to do it full time and I cannot wait to share what my new schedule is going to look like when I get there. So um, I hope you had all your questions answered and if you have anything else for me, comment below and let me know. Okay, bye.